Next chapter of Wonder. This one's called She's Kind. There was a lot of shuffling around when the bell rang and everyone got up to leave. I checked my schedule and it said the next class was English, room 321. I didn't just stop to see if anyone else from my homeroom was going my way. I just zoomed out the class and down the hall and sat as far from the front as possible. The teacher, a really tall man with a yellow beard, was writing on the chalkboard. Kids came in laughing and talking in little groups, but I didn't look up. Basically, the same thing happened in the homeroom happened again. No one except ne sat next to me except for Jack, who was joking around with some kids who weren't in our homeroom. I could tell Jack was the kind of kids that other kids liked. He had a lot of friends. He made people laugh. When the second bell rang, everyone got quiet and the teacher turned around and faced us. His name was Mr. Brown, and then he started talking about what we'd be doing this semester. At a certain point, somewhere between a wrinkle of time and shun of the sea, he noticed me but kept right on talking. I was mostly doodling in my notebook while he talked, but every once in a while I would sneak and look around at the other students. Charlotte was in this class. So were Julian and Henry. Miles wasn't. Mr. Brown had written on the chalkboard in big block letters, P-R-E-C-E-P-T. Okay, everybody, write this down in the very top of your very first page of your English notebook. As we did what he told us to do, he said, Okay, so you can tell me what precept is. Does anybody know? No one raised their hands. Mr. Brown smiled, nodded, and turned around to write on the chalkboard again. Precepts equal rules about really important things. Like a motto? Someone called out. Like a motto, said Mr. Brown, nodding as he was continuing to write on the board. Like a famous quote, like a line from a fortune cookie. Any saying or ground rule that can motivate you. Basically, a precept is anything that helps guide us when making decisions about really important things. He wrote all that on the chalkboard and then he turned around to face us. So what are some really important things, he asked us. A few kids raised their hands as he pointed at them. They gave their answers, which he wrote in the chalkboard in really, really sloppy handwriting. Rules, schoolwork, homework. What else? He said as he wrote, not even turning around. Just call things out. He wrote everything everyone called out. Family, parents, pets. One girl called out the environment. The environment, he wrote on the chalkboard and added our world. Sharks, because they're eating dead things in our ocean, said one of the boys. A kid named Reed. And Mr. Brown wrote it down. Sharks. Bees. Seatbelts. Recycling. Friends. Okay, <laughs> said Mr. Brown. Writing all those things down. He turned around when he was finished writing to face this again. But no one named the most important thing at all. Thing of all. We all looked around out of ideas. God, one kid said. I could tell that even though Mr. Brown wrote down God, that wasn't the answer he was looking for. Without saying anything else, he wrote down who we are. Who we are, he said, underlining each word as he said it. Who we are. Us, right? What kind of people are we? What kind of person are you? Isn't that the most important thing of all? Isn't it the kind of question we should be asking ourselves all the time? What kind of person am I? Did anybody happen to notice the plague next door to the school? The plague, the plaque next door to the school? Anyone read what it says? Anyone? He looked around, but no one knew the answer. It says, know thyself, he said, smiling and nodding. And learning who you are is what we're doing. We're here to do. I thought we were here to learn English, Jack cracked, which made everyone laugh. Oh, yeah, and that too, Mr. Brown answered, which I thought was very cool of him. He turned around and wrote in big, huge block letters that spilled all the way across the chalkboard. Mr. Brown's September Precept. When given the choice between being right or being kind, choose kind. Okay, so everybody, he said, facing us again, I want you to start a brand new section of your notebooks and call it Mr. Brown's Precepts. He kept talking as we did and he was telling us to do. Put today's date at the top of the first page and from now on, at the beginning of every month, I'm going to write a new Mr. Brown precept on the chalkboard and you're going to write it down in your notebook. Then we're going to discuss that precept and what it means. At the end of the month, you're going to write an essay about it and about what it means to you. So by the end of the year, you'll have a list of all of your own precepts to take away with you. Over the summer, I asked all my students to come up with their own personal precept, write it on a postcard, and mail it to me from wherever you go on your summer vacation. People really do that? said one girl whose name I didn't know. Oh, yeah, he answered. People really do that. I've had students send me new precepts years after graduating from this school. Actually, it's pretty amazing. 
He paused and stroked his beard. But anyway, next summer seems like a long way off, I know, he joked, which made us all laugh. So everybody relax a bit while I take attendance, and then when we're finished, we'll start with that. I'll start telling you about all the fun stuff we're going to do this year, in English. He pointed to Jack when he said that, which was also funny, so we all laughed at that. As I wrote down Mr. Brown's September precept, I suddenly realized that I was going to like school, no matter what. I'll read one more chapter. Lunch. Via had warned me about lunch in middle school, so I guess I should have known it would be hard. I just hadn't expected it to be this hard. Basically, all the kids from fifth grade classes poured in the cafeteria at the same time, talking loudly and bumping into one another while they ran off to different tables. One of the lunchroom teachers said something about no seat saving seats allowed, but I didn't know what she meant. Maybe no one else did either because just about everybody was saving a seat for their friends. I tried to sit down at one table where this kid in the chair said, Oh, sorry, but someone else is sitting here. So I moved to an empty table and just waited for everyone to finish stampeding and the lunchroom teacher tell us what to do next. As she started telling us the cafeteria rules, I looked around to see where Jack Will was sitting, but I didn't see him on my side of the room. The kids were still coming in as teachers started calling their first few tables to get their trays and stand in line at the counter. Julian, Henry, and Miles were sitting at the table toward the back of the room. Mom had packed me a cheese sandwich, graham crackers, and a juice box, so I didn't need to stand on in line when my table was called. Instead, I just concentrated on opening my backpack, pulling out my lunch bag, and slowly opening aluminum foil wrapping of my sandwich. I could tell I was being stared at without even looking up. I knew that people were nudging each other, watching me at the corner of their eyes. I thought I was used to those kinds of stares, but I guess I wasn't. There was one table of girls I knew were whispering about me because they were talking behind their hands. Their eyes and whispers kept bouncing over to me. I hate the way I eat. I know how weird it looks. I had surgery to fix my cleft palate when I was a baby and the second cleft surgery when I was four, and I still have a hole in the roof of my mouth. And even though I had jaw alignment surgery a few years ago, I have to, I hate, I have to chew my food in front of my mouth. I didn't realize how this looked until I was at a birthday party once, and one of the kids told the mom of the birthday boy he didn't want to sit next to me because I was too messy with all the food crumbs shooting out my mouth. I know the kid wasn't trying to be mean, but he got in big trouble later, and his mom called my mom to apologize that later that night. When I got home from the party, I went to the bathroom mirror and started eating a saltine cracker to see what it looked like when I was chewing. The kid was right. I looked like a tortoise, if I've ever seen a tortoise eating. Some sort of prehistoric swamp thing. I'm going to keep going. The summer table. Hey, is this seat taken? I looked up and a girl I've never saw before was standing across from my table with a lunch tray full of food. She had long wavy brown hair and wore a tea brown t-shirt with purple peace sign on it. Uh, no, I said. She put her lunch tray on the table, plopped her backpack on the floor, and sat down across from me. She stared to eat the mac and cheese on her plate. Ugh, she said after swinging the first bite. I should have brought my lunch like you did. Yeah, I said, nodding. My name's Summer, by the way. What's yours? August. Cool, she said. Summer. Another girl came over to the table carrying a tray. Why are you sitting here? Come back to the table. It was too crowded, Summer answered. Come sit here. There's more room. The other girl looked confused for a second, and I realized she was one of the been one of the girls that I would caught looking at me just a few minutes earlier. Hand cupped over her mouth, whispering. I guess Summer had been one of the girls at the table, too. Never mind, she said, leaving the table. Summer looked at me, shrugged, smiled, and then took another bite of her mac and cheese. Hey, your name's kind of match, she said as she chewed. I guess she could tell I didn't know what she meant. Summer, August, she said, smiling. Her eyes opened wide as she waited for me to get it. Oh, yeah, I said after a second. We can make this a summer-only table, she said. Only kids with summer names can sit here. Let's see. Is there anyone named June or July? There's a Maya. I said, well, technically May is, May is spring, Summer answered, but she may sit here if she wants to. We can make an exception. She said that if she actually thought about the whole thing, there's Julian, like that name Julia, which means July. I didn't say anything. There's a kid, Reed, in my English class, I said. Yeah, I know, Reed, but how is Reed a summer name, she asked. I don't know, I, uh, I shrugged. I just picture like a reed of grass being a summer thing. Yeah, okay, she said, pulling out her notebook, and Miss Potosa could sit here, too. That kind of sounds like a word like petal, and I think of summer things, too. I have her for homeroom, I said. I have her for math, she answered, making a face. 
She started writing a list of names of the second last page of her notebook. So, who else? By the end of lunch, we had come up with a whole list of kids' names and teachers who could sit at the table if they wanted. Most of the games weren't actually summer names, but they were names that had some kind of connection to summer. I even found a way of making Jack Will's name on the list, pointing out that he could turn a sentence summer like Jack will go to the beach, which Summer agreed would work fine. But if someone didn't have a summer name and wants to sit with us, she said very seriously, we'll let them in if they're nice, okay? Okay, I nodded, even if it's a winter name. Cool beans, she answered, giving me a thumbs up. Summer looked like her name. She had a tan and her eyes were green like a leaf. Out of time. I love you guys. Um, let me know if you need anything.